1 John chapter number 4. We'll begin reading verse 7. The Bible says, Beloved, now he's talking to saved folks. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for the good fellowship for church. We thank you, Lord, you're a good God. As Brother Brian said, Lord, we're thankful for this place we can come to. Lord, I'm thankful the house of God's a place where we can find strength, and encouragement. Lord, we can find help in time of need. Lord, I'm glad for the friends I have here, Lord, and what eternal relationships have been built, all because of the Spirit of God and what you've done for us on Calvary. Lord, the day you came and saved our souls, Lord, we bless you. Now, Lord, I pray you'd help us from the Word of God tonight. I pray that, Lord, you would draw us close to thee, and, Lord, open our minds and our hearts to your truth. And, God, I pray that, Lord, we would truly be instruments of love. Lord, love covereth the multitude of sins, and love, Lord, will turn hate to, away. And God, we're thankful for the goodness of God. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd help each and every one here tonight. Help them, Lord, and edify them, strengthen them. And Lord, I pray when we leave, folks, take note that we've been with Jesus. Be with those special prayer requests. Be with that little baby colt. Be with those that are traveling. Be with Joanne Templeton. And Father, uh, have your will and way and uh, all the other requests. Now, God, meet with us tonight. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things, but before... I get there, I want you to understand First John, uh, it only makes sense that John would write about love. He's known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. John was the only disciple who showed up at Calvary. John was often found uh, in Jesus' inner circle whenever Jesus went and only took a few. John was always there. And on the very night that Jesus announced that one of them would betray him, they all began to ask, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? But John didn't. You find John leaning with his head on the Lord's bosom, uh, just loving on the Lord. And finally, Peter said, uh, Hey, John, ask him who it is. Uh, and he said, Lord, who is it? Uh, so we find that John uh, had a special place uh, uh, in the Lord's heart, and the Lord had a special place in his heart. And isn't it amazing? John was allowed to pin down John 3.16, and he pinned down uh, this great epistle as well. Now, if I could summarize the book of 1 John, uh, chapters 1 and 2 reveal that God is light. Chapters 3 and 4 reveal that God is love. And chapter 5 reveals that God is life. And outside of him, we have no life. And I bless the Lord. But notice a few things from these verses we read. I want you to notice, first of all, the allowance. Look in verse number 7. He said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Notice he exhorts us mm, to allow love to th flow through us. He said, Let us love one another. We need to allow that to happen. But I say everything in this world is geared against us loving one another. The world's full of lust. It doesn't know what love is. And can I say that the world is full of darkness, and the world is full of hatred, and the world is full of envy, and the world is full of things that will attack your love. And if your mindset is not right, you'll fall prey to the philosophies of the world. You'll begin to find fault in somebody instead of finding a reason to love somebody. 
So John exhorts us to allow love to flow through us. Let us love one another. Why? Because love's of God. If you're a Christian, and by the way, you don't hear much preaching on being a Christian anymore. Being a Christian means to be Christ-like. And if you're going to truly carry his name, you ought to carry his attributes. And his greatest attribute is love. So we see the allowance. Now notice the accentuating, verse number 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Can I say, uh, my children, all their bad traits, they took from me. Well, that's how you know they're mine. They took on my personification because they're of me. And can I say, if you are born of the Spirit of God, you ought to ta start taking on some of the attributes of God. And He is love, and so that should be accentuated in your life. Uh, you ought to, the more you learn about Him, the more you ought to become like Him. You ought to start walking like Him and talking like Him. And uh, By the way, they were first called Christians at Antioch because they exemplified the Lord Jesus. And that should be said of us. So we see the, the allowance, we see the accentuating. Notice the appearance of verse number 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Because Jesus came, and God gave the Lord Jesus the cross of Calvary for our sins, we now know what love is. Love is sacrificial. Love is not expecting anything in return. Love is powerful. It changes lives. We see the appearance, the accentuating, the allowance. But then notice the authenticating. Look at verse 10. Here in his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. The bottom line is, you wasn't seeking after God, he came seeking after you. You didn't even retain God in your knowledge. And even if you would have clicked one day that you wanted to know God, there was no way you could get to him. But he came to where you was. And can I say this? Mm, he sent his son to be our propitiation. That big word propitiation means our mercy seat. Our forgiveness is found in Jesus Christ. He is our mercy seat. He is where the, the blood is applied, and it's applied to our lives through Him. So it's all authenticated through Him. And I bless the Lord for that. Isn't that, that wonderful? But I'm not preaching on any of that stuff. I'm not. I want to preach on this thought. I'm going to preach on the warning concerning God's love. The warning concerning God's love. You ever heard the phrase, love till it hurts? You can love till it hurts you, but you can get hurt loving. And if you're not careful, you'll apply God's love at the wrong time, and you will get hurt. You say, well, I thought we were supposed to love all the time. Well, you are, but there are conditions. Can I say, God is angry with the wicked every day. God loves them, but He doesn't manifest His love upon them until they trust in Him. And so there are conditions for God's love. And if you're not careful, you'll get blindsided because you're applying something that's not a Bible truth. It's very, very difficult to discern the difference. So let me give you a few things that this chapter brings out that ought to cause us to uh, contemplate when it comes to love. The Bible cautions us by bringing to our attention, first of all, trying. We ought to try the situation. Look at verse number 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets 
are gone out into the world. Now, goes on verse 2 and says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Now John's went off the scene over 2,000 years ago. And if John said the spirit of Antichrist was in the world then, how much more is it here? Now notice the Bible teaches that we're to try the spirits. Now most people, when they think of this verse, they think of demonic spirits. Well, it's easy to figure those things out. They're wicked and want you to do wicked things. But also man has a spirit. And sometimes people's spirit isn't on the up and up. Sometimes their spirit isn't to worship God. Sometimes their spirit is not here for the right reasons. And so you've got to be cautious about this thing. So we're to try the spirits. Well, preacher, how are we supposed to do that? Well, first of all, we're to try them according to their doctrine. Look again in verse number 1. Beloved, be, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. If somebody is teaching or believing something contrary to the word of God, you should know that. And you should uh, certainly love their soul, but you do not fellowship with them because they are not biblically sound. Now... A lot of people don't like this kind of teaching, but oh well. You receive it, you'll learn to love it. But the truth of the matter is, I get invited all the time to citywide prayer meetings where they'll have every denomination there, and they want us all to come together and lay aside our doctrine and pray unto a God. Well, friends, I'm not laying aside my doctrine because my doctrine is what made me who I am. And my doctrine is the teaching of the Scriptures. Doctrine is not some creed. It is the Bible. And I believe the Bible. And if somebody uses a false Bible, we can't fellowship. If somebody don't believe Jesus was born of a virgin, we can't fellowship. If somebody don't believe that it's the sufficiency of the blood that was shed on Calvary for our sins to be uh, cleansed, I don't have any way to fellowship with them. If somebody don't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, I don't have any reason to fellowship with him. Uh, are you seeing uh, uh, just because somebody calls himself a Christian don't mean that they are. There are many false prophets in the world. There used to be a time when you knew what a Baptist was. But as we sit here tonight, there's some 60 different Baptist faiths in America. Not all of them believe the book right. Because most of them aren't even using the book. I don't have any use for them. You can be a Baptist and not go to heaven. Hmm? So we're to try the spirits, and we try them by doctrine. Now listen, if you talk to somebody long enough, there's some parts of the Word of God. God didn't tell us everything. Half of us not been told. God told us what we needed to know. And you might want to speculate on something that the Bible doesn't clearly define. And uh, listen, I'm not going to fall out with you over something we don't know. Now, there's things I believe. The Bible doesn't fall, you know, follow through with a lot of it. Uh, it's theology according to Brother Duck. We get to heaven, God's going to sort all that out. But when it comes to fundamental doctrine, we have to agree. If we don't, we have nothing to talk about. Mm -mm. Well, yeah, I, I, I know Aaron makes his living from over there at the Creation Museum, but I just, I just don't see Adam and T-Rex hanging out. Because it's not in the Bible. There's a big difference between a beast and a T-Rex. I just, I, just, I just don't believe that. Now, I can show you the Ice Age. Yeah, this earth, when Satan was thrown out of heaven, Lucifer was thrown out of heaven and landed this earth, God, the Bible says that God thrust this earth through the hoary frost of heaven. 
this earth was covered in ice. I can show you that. So if there were dinosaurs in, that's what happened to them. Because they find whole woolly mammoths. Something happened very quickly for that thing to freeze. So anyway, that's just speculation. God will sort all that out. But don't tell me you don't believe Jesus was Lord. We got a problem. Hmm? Are we okay? Well, we also not only try them by doctrine, but we try the spirits by declaration. Look at verse number 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit, capitalized, of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Now this is kind of confusing to the natural thinking man. The natural thinking man says, well, if, if somebody believes in Jesus, then they're saved. Well, it didn't say anything about believing. It said confesseth. There's a big difference between believing and confessing. Matter of fact, I could take you over there in James where it says the devils believe in Jesus and they fear and tremble. You tell me devils are saved? There's a difference between believing, having a head knowledge, and a heart knowledge. Uh, see, to confess is dealing with the salvation experience. And see, the word confess means to possess and then profess. Doesn't mean to profess without possessing. If I'm going to confess something, that means that I know something about it because I've received Jesus. Uh, he, I have possessed him in my heart, and then I can profess. Uh, 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 for with the heart man believeth unto salvation, uh, and with the mouth confession is made. Are you listening now? It's more than just saying, I believe Jesus was the Son of God. Uh, you've got to know him. When you know him and you possess him, then you can profess him. That's confessing what you know. There's a big difference there. It's a salvation experience. And can I say there are people that say they're a Christian? That don't mean anything. I could tell you I'm six foot nine. Am I six foot nine? No. Hmm? There's a big difference between saying something and knowing something. There's a big difference saying that uh, I believe in Jesus and knowing him. And when he's talking about confessing that he is the Son of God, that means you know him. So understand, when you try the spirits, we try them according to doctrine, according to declaration. And don't miss this part. We try the spirits according to their drive. Look at the last part of verse 3. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. What spirit of Antichrist? Their motive. Why are they doing what they are doing? This is very important. Can I say most televangelists do what they are doing for filthy lucre's sake? Hmm? For greed. I don't know if you watched that uh, short documentary. It's like three episodes on uh, uh, Discovery Plus over Hillsong and, and that outfit. Uh, I don't call it a church. It's not a church. Uh, I'm glad, uh, you know, a lot of them start calling themselves fellowships. But not everything calls it a church. It's a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but that outfit, if you can't watch ten minutes of that and see what that was all about, it's all about the money. So when I try the spirit of Hillsong and I see their motive is money, I know that's not of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? Uh, there are many things that drive people and cause people to come to church. Some people just want to fit in somewhere, be a part of something. Well, I highly recommend being part of the Lord's church but you've got to get born again and then baptized in that church and, or, or be moved to that church from a church of like faith and be a part of it. That's all wonderful, and I highly recommend it. But there are some people, they'll go through the motions, Brother Brian, because they just want to belong somewhere. Hmm? 
Yeah, they just want to belong to a club or something where they get noticed. Hmm? Uh, that's their motivation. Can I say there are some people, their motivations, they want attention. They like the attention. They like people making a fuss over them. You've got to be very careful when you start trying to discern the Spirit. What is their motive? If their motive is not Jesus Christ get the glory, then their motive is wrong. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. That's where the glory goes. But I've seen a lot of people stand up and shed crocodile tears because they want everybody to come and make a fuss over them. If somebody's making a fuss over you, then they're not making a fuss over Jesus. And the, wrong, and, and the drive is wrong. Now, what, what are you saying, Brother Doug? Well, far too many have shed God's love on individuals whose motives were not correct. Or they've shed God's love on somebody without knowing their motives. They haven't tried the Spirit. And God's love has went in vain. I'm talking about the warning concerning God's love. Now, listen. Until one comes to Christ, we're to try the spirits. Now, if somebody walks in, they're to always feel welcome, and they're always to find a warm, inviting atmosphere. Always. If somebody that's been a prodigal comes to church, they're to feel welcome, and they're to feel warmth. But they're not to feel and be made over with God's love until they get right with God. Because what happens is if somebody comes through the door, but they don't get to the door, and we shed God's love on them, they might get a false sense of they're okay without getting to the door. Are you listening? You start to see where I'm going? Go study Luke 15, the prodigal. The father didn't kill the fatted calf. The father didn't call for the robe and the ring until the prodigal confessed to the father he was no longer worthy to be the father's son. Now the father ran to him, and the father fell on him, and the father kissed him, but the father didn't give him the privileges of being the son until he confessed his fault and got right with the father. You hear you listening? I've seen folks that hadn't been here for a while show up and everybody flock on them like a, like a bunch of geese that's been flying around Florence. Uh, making a big deal with them, but then I never seen any change out of that individual. Are you hearing? You've given them a false sense of security. Hmm? Very important. When it comes to God's love, yes, we love everybody. And our desire is for everybody to be right with God. But you're not to shower God's love on people who are not in the will of God until they get in the will of God. You can love them. You can be warm to them. You can welcome them. But you don't shower them until they get things made right with God. We notice that we're cautioned as believers concerning trying we're also, in this chapter, when it comes to being warned about God's love, we notice the triumphing. Look at verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Notice mm, that you triumph over the false prophets, the false spirits, the false doctrine, the false drive, the false decorations, you've overcome that through the Spirit of God. Now, how do, we, how do we overcome? We overcome by the Savior's blood. We've been saved. 
We've overcome by the sacred book. We know how to try people because of the Bible. And we have overcome by the Spirit's beckoning. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the Spirit of God ought to beckon you on when and when not to shower God's love. Now here's the problem, Brother Donald. So many people are like ostriches with their head buried in the sand. They don't ever seek to discern whether or not I should or shouldn't do something. Boy, did you read the, the devotion today on the app on waiting on the Lord? Oh, my stars. Guilty. Anybody ever been guilty? So there were four of us read it. Hmm? You ought to read it. The problem is, is we react, but we don't consult the Lord on what we should do. Big difference. Hmm? It's easy to react. We live in a reactionary world. But instead of just popping off of the mouth, or instead of just reacting, or instead of just jumping out there and doing something, because we think that's what we're supposed to do, we're to wait on God and let the Spirit of God tell us what to do. But so many people have drowned Him out in their life, you don't know if He's speaking or not. Mm -mm. There ought to be something beckoning you from deep within inside whenever you do anything for God. And that is the Holy Ghost of God. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. But He won't lead and guide you if you get out in front of Him. You're leading Him. And that's why so many people are miserable. So many people don't know what God's will is for their life. So many people are full of doubt. So many people are up and down and in and out all the time because they don't let the Spirit of God beckon them from within. That's why you're not living a victorious life. That's why you're not triumphing. Hmm? You ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Nothing you see from out of Washington or out of Frankfurt or out of uh, Mayor's Court in Florence ought to affect you because you got your sights on a higher thing. And His name is Jesus. But yet, so many times, we're so reactionary... We get a flat tire, and our whole life is turned upside down. Well, God might have been trying to slow you down so He can get your attention. Hmm? Got one other point, because you're all about to die on me tonight. I knew this wouldn't be high. But this is important stuff. And too many times we, we, we don't think on these things. We just read the verses, but we don't really see what they're saying. I was reading this this week, and this popped off the page at me. I thought, Lord, there it is. And I say that he deals with trying the spirits. He deals with triumphing, but then he deals with truth. You know what they used to say? The truth hurts. You know, people, they, they come to church, but they don't want to hear truth. Well, you're going to the wrong place. You don't want, to, don't want the truth? Watch CNN. Uh, or really any of them anymore. Uh, and I miss Walter Cronkite. He might not have been telling us the truth, but I believed he was. Uh, somebody go dig him up and put him back behind the mic or something, huh? Mm. But uh, the truth will set you free. But the truth sometimes hurts. Can I say sinners don't like hearing they're sinners? Sinners like hearing you can still sin and go to heaven. That's why they go to crossroads. That's why the preacher at crossroads will pop open a beer and say, if Jesus came, I'd have a beer with him. No, you wouldn't. If Jesus come, you'd get left out, joker. See, they, they did that on stage, if you hadn't heard that. He did that on stage over at crossroads, popped open a beer, said he'd have one with Jesus. Huh? He also had uh, from California, imagine that, from California, uh, the leader of the porn church came in and said, pornography is good for you. Hmm? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really helped America, hadn't it? That's why we've got a bunch of perverts running around. Uh, 
So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you tonight to see that truth is the vitality or the heartbeat of, our, of, of the church. If we don't have truth, we don't have anything. We're no, we're no better than the Moose Lodge or the Oak Lodge or anybody else. Or the Possum Lodge, Brother Bob. I, I've become a fan of the Possum Lodge on the Red Green Show. If you haven't got into that show, you need to. It'll help you. No? It ranks right up there with Andy Griffith, almost. But look what he says about the truth in verse 5. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Why? Because we're of God. Notice some things about truth. Truth is hidden to the world. I've never seen people that have so many degrees behind their name and supposedly so intelligent, so dumb in all my life. You know what has left America? Common sense. Uh, hey, I grew up in the country. I grew up around people who didn't have a whole lot of higher education. But they had something we used to call horse sense. This crowd around here, they, they don't know to come in when it's raining. I mean, they don't have any sense at all. And can I say the world doesn't know anything about truth? The world is offended by anything that the world don't agree with. And so they don't want to hear truth. And the world don't like satire. I like satire. Huh? The world doesn't know anything about it. This generation, they are so, they've been so blinded. Listen, I, I come up right at the tail end of that thing where you didn't need a college education to make a good living. But it wasn't long after that, everybody started telling you, you need to go to college so you'll be able to support your family and, and have, make a good living. Well, you know what a lot of colleges have done? They've sucked wisdom right out of America. And we've got folks running around with a bunch of degrees. I've seen them this week outside with mask on. One word comes to mind, morons. That's all I can say. First of all, you're outside. Second of all, there's been so much information come out in the last month, all you got to do is read. And you'll see that everything that we've been saying for two years is right. It's just a face diaper. That's all it is. It's not going to keep you from getting sick. But it makes you look real weird walking around outside. But anyway. But they think they're doing something. We was over at Menard's the other day. They had a little baby with one on. I wanted to smack them. But I didn't feel like going to jail that day. <laughs> Truth is hidden to the world. It's not going to get any better. I don't know if you're paying attention to what's really going on. How many people remember about seven, eight years ago when... Venezuela got so bad that they were showing all the shelves empty in the grocery stores and that the interest rates were up about 40% and people were fleeing Venezuela because they were starving to death. I mean, uh, Venezuela is a, a big oil country and they had tons of oil they were exporting, but the people who lived there never saw any benefactor of it. Y'all remember that? That's happening in America. All that has went on in the last two years in America is to make an America a socialistic country. They're trying to kill democracy. I haven't seen it. There's a documentary out called The 2000 Mules where they talk about all the people involved in throwing the election the wrong way. They go on to, uh, uh, there's, there's enough information coming out about January 6th and all the FBI agents that was out there that uh, uh, we're part of the insurrection. And why in the world would Capitol Police just open the door and say, come on in? But if you get to looking at what is going on in America right now, inflation is the highest it's been in 40 years. Mm -hmm. Gas prices, 429 today, wasn't that a blessing? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the grocery shelves? Why? 
Joe Biden said it yesterday. Now, of course, we know that he didn't know what he was saying, but he read it off of a card yesterday, that America is great when America depends on the government. Now, that shouldn't shock us because I've read 2 Timothy chapter 3. I've read the book of Revelation. And I see here there's a spirit of Antichrist, but the, the Antichrist is on his way. Are you listening? And in order for him to take over, there's going to be a one-world government, a one-world religion. He's going to have all the answers. Uh, and in order for him to take control, everything has to be shot. And America's headed that way. It's all by design. But the world doesn't see any of it because truth is hidden to them. They're still blaming Trump. Gas was $1.67 when he was in office. Inflation was 1.8% when he was in office. It's nearing 10%. They're going to destroy your 401ks so you can't depend on what you've desired to depend on to retire. They're going to make it so expensive you can't drive anywhere. They're pushing electric cars so you can only go so far so they can keep you on monitor. And by the way, they're already monitoring where you go and how long you were there through your cell phone. It won't be long. They're going to cut off your Internet so you don't have free course to Facebook anymore. And, and Elon Musk is, is enhancing that because he's going to take over tw Twitter where truth will come out. And they don't want you to know any truth. So just mark her down. It's not going to get any better. They're trying to pigeonhole you into a little corner so where you'll keep getting their vaccines or whatever else they come up with next so they can control you. I've been telling you all for 15 years that just outside of Indianapolis, there's concentration camps that have been built. Why are they building concentration camps in America? It's certainly to house all the illegals. They're opening up the borders and saying, come on in. It's for those who do not comply. And how come we don't have enough money to provide baby formula in America, which is a great shortage, but we just sent $40 billion to Ukraine? And if the war over there is so terrible, why'd they have a concert last weekend over there in Ukraine? You're being played. See, they don't know the truth. Your neighbors around you don't know the truth. And many of you, by the looks on your face, don't know the truth either. All these things are happening. Because Jesus is coming. Truth is hidden for the world, but it's heard by the believers. When truth is put out there, believers, they hear it. Because the one who is the truth lives within them. I am the way, the truth, and the life, the Lord said. And can I say this? Truth is heralded to our heart by the Spirit of God. When there's truth, the Spirit of God lets that ring in our hearts. That's why when preaching's on, you'll hear guys jump, and shout, and holler, because something inside of them just rang, and they, they don't even know what they're doing. They're just enjoying it. huh? Because the Spirit of God heralds that to their heart. We ought to be very cautious concerning God's love. We ought to grant it to folks that are willing to receive it. We ought to be careful, though. Make sure you try the spirits. Yes, we love everybody. But we don't shed our love on everybody until they've been brought into the fold of God. Listen, I love all of you, but I don't shed my love on you like I do my family. There's a difference. You'll, you'll get that analogy. We need to triumph every day. And we can't triumph every day. We ought to live in victory. You know, when you talk about the end times and all of that, a lot of people get scared to death. I get excited. I know we're that much closer home. Huh? 
I mean, they're chipping animals and they're wanting to start chipping kids. All pointing again to the Antichrist. Hey, hallelujah, it's happening. We see it going on. We're about out of here. So we need to go tell somebody about Jesus. And you ought to be careful when it comes to truth. Again, we have absolute truth. We have the spirit of truth living within us. And you ought to listen to him more. And you'll understand more. God to help us. When it comes to this world, Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. You can't go anywhere. Start looking around, and most people you see are not ready to meet the Lord. That's why we're to shine as lights. We're to be the salt of the earth. We're to have a loving spirit, a kind spirit. We're to be willing to give every man an answer when they come into our office and ask, tell me about your God. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. Let me tell you, how much time you got? Hmm? Because so many don't know him. They know about him. But they don't know him. But for tonight's message, the real question is, do you know him? I remember back in the 80s when bumper stickers started coming out. When you really had bumpers on cars. And they were made of steel. When the bumper weighed more than the cars we have today weigh. They were chromed. There was a bumper sticker come out that said, If you were tried for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? You know why you don't see that bumper sticker today? It convicts too many people. The preacher, I'm a Christian. Is there enough proof? They used to say in my generation, proof's in the pudding. What you say with your lips really don't mean much. It's what you say in your lifestyle. Are you a Christian? If not, you can be. If you're here tonight and you've lived beneath the privileges of being a Christian, why? Hmm. I just tell my kids all the time, no, we don't do that. You're a foster. When Taya came into the picture... She didn't understand all that. Now she understands. She's a foster. There's just certain things that we just don't we don't jihad with because we're fosters. You say you think you're better than people? No, I don't. I know what I am, but there's some things we just don't do. They're just not going to do it because we're fosters. You say, well, I don't like that. Oh well, become a foster. You will. I don't know what to tell you. Well, there are certain things that, you know, God's people do I don't like. Well, become one, and you'll like it. Probably start loving it. Hmm? But if you're here and you're living beneath your privileges, why? Jesus has been good to you. He's blessed you. He hears every time you pray. He's good to you. Why do you want to live beneath his privilege? I want to hang out with him more. I want to talk with him more. I want to walk with him more. I want him to be evident in my life. How about you tonight? Will you start living up to his name? God help us. Because there's so many people who need to see him in us. They've seen too much of us. They need to see him in us. Do you love God the right way? If not, why don't you start loving him the right way tonight? Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come get a song of invitation. As he comes, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for truth, Lord. Thank you for the scriptures. 
But Lord, if we're all honest, we all have friends and family members who are not ready to meet you. God, help us to be everything we're supposed to be, and then God, give us opportunities to share you with them so they can be ready to meet you when you come. Now, Lord, I don't know anybody's heart. I don't even know my own heart. Jeremiah says it's deceitfully wicked. No man knoweth it. But Lord, you know every heart in here tonight. God, if there's somebody's heart that's not right with you, Lord, I pray they'd get it made right tonight. God, if there's somebody here tonight living beneath the privileges of you and your name, I pray they'd get that made right tonight. God, I pray you'd be glorified in our lives. And God, help us to love everybody. And then God, give us occasions where folks are getting right with you where we can shed your love upon them. God, help us to be what you'd have us to be. Blessing this invitation. We'll thank you and praise you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Forms app today where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.